this is Ann Maloney with NOLA.com, the Times Speaking, and we are in the kitchen at Cafe, Cafe Dauphine with Chef Tia Henry, who's a chef Good owner. morning. And we're going to have a, a great morning, a delicious morning this morning. Right? Yes, we are. I'm going to be demonstrating how to make and fry our famous deep fried seafood stuffed bell peppers. And these are different. I mean, I love stuffed bell peppers, but what's different about these is that they're coated and fried. Yes. Um, and she serves them. She's going to have them at South Point Fest this year. Yes, I will. And that's where I first tasted them about a year ago. And so I had to come over here and see how to do it. How do you get the stuffing in the bell pepper, coat it, and fry it? So we're going to jump right in, and we'll just keep talking as we go. Sure. And, um, and show, us, show us how it goes. So the process begins with making our wet batter. Our wet batter contains mayonnaise. I like to use blue plate. Me too. <laughs> That's your go-to blue plate? Yes, yes it is. Blue plate is. If for some reason I could not find blue plate in a store, Hellman's will be the second best. But I like to use blue plate. Creole mustard. It's just gonna give it an extra little kick and flavor. So we just need like two spoons of that. This is chopped seasoning that has been pre-cooked with onions, bell peppers, a little celery. That's basically the trinity. Yes it is, yes okay. it is. And we're just making a little batch here, but normally you would be making... Yes, we're making enough for one pound of crab. Okay. Um, usually in-house, the minimum size for one bin would be at least 24 pounds of crab meat that we would use. And how much shrimp? Per bell pepper. So we don't mix our shrimp in with the stuffing. Okay. We add the shrimp to the stuffing to the bell peppers per order. We stuff our bell peppers per order. Oh, Because what okay. happens is if the crab meat sits in the bell pepper for over a day, it starts to get a tainted taste from the bell pepper. Mm -hmm. So what I found that the best way and the best and most efficient thing to do to keep the quality and freshness of the product is to stuff them to order. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so we add the shrimp to order as well. And we usually add about five shrimp For to each a bell pepper. pepper. Okay. Yes. To each, and it's not a whole bell pepper, it's a half. Okay. Yes. So, uh, yeah, because bell peppers have a strong flavor. Yes. And so yes. I could see if you let it sit in there, it, it would that, just pick that up that more. Tainted, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, green onion. A little Worcestershire sauce. And you're cooking like I cook at home. Right? <laughs> Eyeing it. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, yeah. yeah. A little lemon juice. We are going to put together a recipe for y'all. Um, it might not be exactly the way she makes it here because, you know, she's got to keep a few secrets for her customers. But we are going to give you a recipe so you can do this at home. How many and pounds of seafood would you say you go through throughout oh, the weekend of Summerset? Satchel week? Summerfest. Oh, for Satchmo Fest? Yeah. For Satchmo Fest, I will be doing at least nine dozen, I'm sorry, yeah, nine dozen pounds of crab meat. Yeah, yeah. And so what I'll do is I'll make the crab stuff in the head mm -hmm. and freeze that. That's a little cayenne. Yeah. Well, Creole seasoning, Creole seasoning. Oh, Creole So that's a little okay. bit of every. That's a little bit of everything in there. All right. So that's... Creole, cayenne, salt, pepper, onion, garlic powder. Okay, and then we just whisk all yes. that together. Yes, so this is going to be the base for my craft stuff. Let me show folks that a little bit. So you got like a nice creamy base in here. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Did you create this recipe or is it something well, you know? Me and my mom did. It was our spin on the original bell pepper that is so popular for the holidays in New Orleans, which is a combination of ground meat shrimp and crab everything tastes better fries so it's like why don't we try frying it mm -hmm. but instead we're just going to use all seafood in it so it's a recipe that we played with and we tried different variations of it particularly with the way that the bell peppers were cut and the way that it was fried so that process took a little bit of trial and error to get that perfected mm -hmm. so at one time we just tried to stuff a uh, half of a bell pepper with the stuffing and fry it and that was just that, that didn't work Okay. It, just, it just wouldn't get hot enough in the inside. Yeah. It, it didn't look too appealing, you know. Yeah. Okay. And then I cut it and battered and fried it. Voila. It made all the difference. <laughs> so this is a pound of lump crab meat that I'm going to add to this wet mixture. Yeah, because I first had these at Satchmo a year ago, and uh -huh. I eat a lot of the food at festivals. I go around and try a lot of it, and usually I take one bite, maybe two bites, and this one I, I ate the whole thing. <laughs> and I think one of the things that I really like about it is I love the fact that it didn't have brown meat in it. 
so uh -huh, it was really uh -huh. a seafood dish. And your mom, you and your mom um, did a lot of uh, the recipes for that restaurant, right? I mean, Me mom, and my mom, my sister-in-law, yes, and everything was just, you know, and just from what customers told me that they liked and what they would want to see on the menu, what I know that people want to eat when they go to a restaurant in New mm -hmm. Orleans, our menu offers a lot of versatility from seafood, steaks, ribs. We try to offer a little bit of everything. We wanted our own unique dishes mm -hmm. that were just, you know, indicative of Cafe Dauphine, right. you know, so we have the deep fried stuffed bell peppers that are served nowhere else, and then our seafood egg roll. So those are our two signature dishes. Okay. Our one of our viewers just said every time they're in town, they got to make sure they come oh, by. Oh, thank you. Dolphin. We appreciate that. <laughs> so let's show people the consistency of that before okay. you add the breakfast. So it kind of looks, I guess, the way that chicken salad would look or tuna fish because you've added the mayonnaise and the egg okay. mixture. So, so it's so not yes. too soupy, but it's wet. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So to bind it all together and to thicken it, we're going to add plain breadcrumbs. That's another thing. Italian breadcrumbs gives it a whole different flavor. So it's best to use the plain breadcrumbs okay. and you keep the crisp, clean flavor of the seafood. Okay. And then you just mix and add until it's yes. the right consistency? Yes, yes, yes. So we'll get a picture of that once you get that. And then want. another thing about crab meat, because crab meat has a lot of water. And sometimes, it, you know, it has, I'll get it, it has more water than, you know, sometimes I have to strain it, sometimes I can just use it, you right. know, right out the container. So, and another thing is, you can, freeze your crab meat and use it later and a lot of times after you freeze it when you defrost it you need to add a little bit more breadcrumbs to tighten it up so you just have to check and see the moisture of yes the, yes of the, yeah because i've had crab meat like that yes very, do so. you use our local seafood i try to i try to whenever it's in season and it's available right now i am using all local i was using venezuelan before and it was an outbreak with that so yes right now i'm using local crab meat do you have a secret place around town that you always love to go to to get fresh seafood? You know what? I have two seafood vendors in town that I deal with. Mm -hmm. This morning I went to a local, a local grocery store and the crab meat was on sale because I just needed one pound and I was going to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so All right. it's pretty dry at yeah. this point. I mean, it's moist, but I mean, it's, it's like you could grab it and make you, a meatball. You want to make, you want to get it to a consistency where you can make balls with it where we can stuff it into our bell pepper. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so I'm gonna put some gloves on because I'm about to get down to the dirty work now. <laughs> the dirty work, you mean the fun work, right? Yes. Like, put your hands in there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Could you review again for us real quick what was in the base? Uh, one of our viewers was asking. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Eggs. Creole mustard, okay. green onion, pre-cooked chopped seasoning, Worcestershire sauce, lemon juice, Creole seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a lot of things. Can't forget that Creole and seasoning, just, right? Just so you know, we are at Cafe Dolphine, and we are with Tia Henry, who is the chef and owner here with her husband. And Well, she's the chef. Yes. And he's an owner. Yes, he is. And we're making deep-fried Stuffed, seafood stuffed, stuffed bell peppers. <laughs> it's a long name. And so this is the part I'm super interested in. I wanted to see the consistency of the, the stuffing, uh -huh. but I'm really interested in how you get to the point where you can fry this and it's So cooked. what we did is we cut the bell peppers in half, we removed the membranes, and we baked them. When we bake them, we bake them face down so they don't hold any water. We only bake them about 15 minutes until the color changes to a bright green and they begin to wrinkle just a little bit. So you can see right here maybe the difference in the color and the bell pepper when they're ready as opposed to a raw bell pepper. So the color gets brighter and lighter green. So we just want them a little tender where they still retain their shape because if they're too soft and too mushy, you're not gonna be able to bat them in hold them if you could, you're not gonna get a good shape to them yeah yeah and mr. Manuel is kind of cooking in the background because it is operating hours now so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're well, gonna have to share the fryer well, okay okay so get it good stuffed in and, there good and there we go okay and that's the way it looks once the crab meat is stuffed into the bell pepper okay we then add pre-boiled shrimp Use a smaller size so they fit into the bell pepper. But if you were making them at home and you want to use bigger shrimp, smaller shrimp, then it's 
is up to you or the amount of shrimp. You may want to use more shrimp and less stuffing. So I'm just going to work, work them, work them the in top. there. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to smash them and work them down in there. And there we go. Okay. Looks beautiful. <laughs> the next step of the process is we're going to cut the bell pepper in half. So, so you stuff it first and then, then we you... cut it. Okay. So when we make our servings in the restaurant, this is how we cut our bell peppers and serve them in two halves like this. And the customer gets two pieces like this on their plates. Okay. Gotcha. For the festivals, we make them more bite-sized, friendly, festival friendly. So we cut them again into fours. And the serving for the festival will be three pieces, but we're gonna batter them into little balls like this. Okay. Gotcha, and you said like when you left it as a full half that yes. sometimes the inside wasn't cooked as yes, much? Yes, because it takes, you know, it, you don't want your coating to overcook on the outside, and it was yeah. just, I think, too big of a piece of yeah, product to go into that. before. No, I've yeah. had that problem every single time I tried to make stuffed bell peppers. And okay. should I do the halves, fry the halves, or should I just fry them this way? Um, I'll do one half. Yeah, do one half too, and then we'll have an example of each. Yeah. So before you decided to uh, fry the bell peppers, did you ever think about baking them? Did you ever try to bake them? With the crab meat? No, because we serve the original stuffed bell pepper with the crab, shrimp, okay. and ground meat here at the restaurant that's baked. So we okay. serve that variation here. Gotcha, okay. I love the fact that you leave the whole shrimp in them, because when you do bite into it, you get a really nice You get a nice piece, shrimp. yeah, yeah. So you, so the only way the shrimp are cut is when you actually cut the bell. Yes, peppers. they're not minced prior. Okay. No. And really, the ba the main thing if people are doing this at home would be to be sure that the te the um, the texture of the stuffing is correct. Like yes, you can season yes. it really any way you yeah. want, whatever you like to eat. Beautiful. Okay. And I guess you can try something like this with the crab meat and even put them into jalapeno peppers, maybe mushrooms, mm -hmm. or anything that you can fit it into. Ooh, right, batter it and fry you had me much. at jalapeno yeah, peppers. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, so on to the battering process. You have to triple batter the bell peppers to get a nice thick coating on them so that it stays. So the first mixture that we're going to put it into is flour. So flour first. Flour first, yes. I'm gonna take a real quick picture of that. Okay. All right. <laughs> and I'm gonna get one more piece so I can have at least three pieces of serving size. Okay, so we put them in flour. Yes, and you just wanna make sure that they're nicely coated, coated with okay. the flour. Yes, because if it's some bell pepper exposed that no. doesn't have flour stuck yeah. to it, when you go in the egg wash, you may not get any batter stuck on that piece. Okay, next, you're gonna go into your egg wash. The egg wash is just a mixture of milk and eggs. So this mixture right here had about four eggs, fill the rest with milk. So a little, not not, a, not a, even a half a gallon of milk to okay. four eggs. This is a mixture of cornmeal, seasoning, and flour. And because my flour is not pre-seasoned, this is where my seasoning comes in okay. for my batter. So you got a little Creole seasoning in there. Flour, flour cornmeal, corn yes. Okay. So we're going back into the egg wash. So we go into the egg wash twice for the process. Okay. So that we can go back into the flour and coat it one more time. So you're going into the dry mix three times, to the wet batter two times, and now it's ready to fry. Okay. So flour, egg wash. This, the cornmeal flour, and seasoned, yeah. The back in there and the back of the flour. Okay, in the okay. same way, if your bell peppers are not firm, if your crab meat is too loose, it won't hold its form like this is. Gotcha. So a good way to test the filling would be to just try to make a meatball out of it and see if it'll hold together. Exactly, you... exactly. Okay, exactly. all right. Because that's what was concerning me about trying it at home. I don't want to end up with a, a, a Dutch oven full of stuffing floating around. <laughs> and this is a festival size portion. <laughs> so how many years have you been doing Sash Pro? This is gonna be my second year. Yeah? Yes. Are you excited? I am Come super on. excited. Last year, we lost a day 
due to the monsoon oh, that and was the, the great flood of New Orleans. Yeah. So we're, we're hoping for a, great, a better year this year. And you fry on site, right? You oh, do, yes, all yes, All of yes, this yes. is done. You can't pre-fry afterward. It right. just doesn't, it just doesn't taste So this is a lot of work when you're out there. Oh, people. yes, yes. Not a lot of work and a lot of mess. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Do you have like an assembly line of people set up, kind of just whipping back and forth? It, it, depends, on the, it depends on the size of the festival that we're doing, how many people I'm going to need. But they are kind of standing there battering and frying. And you got Sunrise into, to sunset. You got into the festival work pretty pretty recently. You just this decided. This is my three years, three years, okay. three years. This year, yeah. Yeah. You said you just uh, you just decided to, to dip your toe in, and you found. But you know, I, I was something I was always interested in. Whenever I go to festivals or carnivals, I'm like, oh, this is something I would like to do. And then we just jumped into. It. We said, well, let's try, and we submitted the application and kind of hit the ground running from there. I did okay. uh, French Quarter Fest this year. Mm -hmm. And I participate in a lot of jazz and heritage uh, smaller festivals, and they have a they have a, a catapult program for culinary and arts based um, businesses, and we did that. Too. Okay. Yeah. Right. And you said it's actually brought you in some more customers, right? People oh, yeah. learn about you. And oh yeah, the festival six folded. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so you you have one of these really nice deep fryers. Great. I need more. That's still not enough <laughs> for the amount of food we have to fry. <laughs> but at home, I would just do this in my Dutch oven with a slotted spoon yes. if I had to, if I yeah. don't have a frying Or basket. one of those little electric countertop fryers. I like those too because they hold a good even temperature. Right. Yeah. Okay, so these, this is what it looks like for the festival size portion, the two halves. And these are the three balls that we cut for the festival size portions. So we're going to drop them down in the fryer. And you'll know when they're ready, they're going to get a nice golden brown kind of similar to the color of fried chicken. And everything is really cooked, except for the batter, so you don't really have to worry about like whether anything's cooked inside of it. You're just getting it hot inside. We just try, yes, yes, we just, yes, exactly. Okay. It's going to be hot in that batter on the outside. And then they just kind of float up to the top and turn the right color, and you know they're Yes, kind of yeah, and whenever I put it, because especially like these halves, there's a lot of stuff, and so that's a heavy piece of meat that we're mm -hmm. frying, so we just kind of want to jiggle your baskets so they're not settling at the bottom and stick to okay. the baskets. Yeah. All right. My fry oil is on 350. We use um, soy frying oil. Mm -hmm. And you had, you did experiment with this though. You did have some yes, steps yes. and things. Yes, so. yes. Especially with the battering, like I, I told you, we tried just using a half of a bell pepper, but that didn't look too appetizing. Mm -hmm. And the inside just wouldn't get hot enough. And then we cut them, and then we were just battering them twice. So like the flour, the egg wash, and back into the dry again. And it still just wasn't doing it. Sometimes the, the batter would break away from it right. and be the bell pepper. It just wasn't what I was looking for or what I imagined. And then it's like one of my cooks said, you know what's here? I think that we need to maybe try battering it three times. I'm like, three times? That's too much batter. What batter stuff? Three times. <laughs> and no, I'm like, home. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and these can be eaten alone by itself. You can use remolized sauce cocktail sauce, tartar sauce, ketchup, whatever your favorite okay. dipping sauce is. What's your with. preferred so dipping sauce? I like remoulade sauce. Remoulade? Yeah, okay. Like remoulade, yes. And yeah, these would be great for a party, like to put out yes. as a little yes. appetizer yes. or something like that. I, I've done those, and they hold up pretty well. They they hold up actually better to me than crab cakes do, the fried crab mm -hmm. cakes that we do, so I, I'll do those some time for a buffet. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell us again, if we don't have a deep fryer at home, what are some other ways that we could get the same kind of effect? If you have a countertop fryer, those, the like one a fried daddy? Yeah, they just hold like a gallon of grease. You can get them pretty cheap, maybe like $40, $50, but they regulate the temperature, so they're pretty good to, to fry in at home. And that's the key, um, right? Regulating or, the temperature? Or even the same way that you would fry chicken or fry fish at home, same method. I have it, whatever pot is your favorite pot, uh, Dutch oven or whatever to fry in at home, that'll work too. Yeah, big cast, deep cast iron skillet would probably yeah. work. Um, yeah. And I just want to say again where we are. We are at Cafe Dauphine with Chef Tia Henry, and she is showing us how to make her deep fried seafood stuffed bell peppers. And this is a signature dish here at Cafe Dauphine. And I had it for the first time at Satcho Fest and thought it was amazing and wanted to learn how to make it. And she very generously agreed to show it. So this is where we are right now. You see, we're gonna let it get a little bit browner, but that's what it looks like. And these are our, okay. That's how we're so that's what you'll see at Satcho. Yes, mm -hmm. our little maze ball. <laughs> and you, you'll serve them with a little sauce? With remoulade sauce, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Do you know what you're charging for them this year? 
It's nine dollars for okay. a portion size of three. Yeah, okay. and they're very filling. They are. They're they're cutting three. So if you have somebody else with you, you know, you get to share and take. That's what. <laughs> yeah. well, that's what I love because a lot of things you buy and you don't you want to you want to eat a lot of things. Uh huh. And this way, if you've got your gang with you, you can get one order and share them, and then go on and try something else. And then whenever some people see the the title, deep fried seafood stuffed bell pepper. They're like, how does that look? And they're like, oh, that's not what I would expect. I don't think this big old thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, oh, well, yeah, I want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you think about that, it sounds... How am I going to eat yeah, that? How am I going to eat that? Walk around. Walking around, <laughs> yes. I'm, where am I going to cut that? Yeah. <laughs> Circling back real quick, what is your favorite recipe for remoulade? Uh, we make our remoulade sauce in-house. Okay, so that's your favorite variation yes, yes. of it, yeah? Our secret ingredient that we add to ours, I guess that everybody, a lot of people add ketchup. Mm -hmm. We don't add ketchup. We use chipotle peppers and adobo sauce that comes in a can. That gives it an extra color and a different smoky type flavor to it. So you're supposed to have any tomato in it? No. No. No, no. no tomato, no. all spice. No. But it's still got but a little it's, still, but it's, still, it's, it's very mild though. It's, it's oh, really? Very, okay. It, you know, it's, it's not pepper. They're not really not pepper. They have maybe like a little smoky flavor Ooh, to it. I'll okay. call it more smoky than spicy. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's check on our bell peppers. They're almost ready. Alright. And so you when did y'all open? Six years ago. Six, six years, years this ago. summer. We've okay. been here six years this summer. And the menu that we started out with is the same menu that we have now. So. And your husband grew up in the same place. Right? What yes. is his name? Fred. Fred, Fred. Henry. Yes. And, his, and his, he said he had like family lived right across the street. So y'all. His grandmother house is right across the street in the middle of the block. His mom lives on the next block, right around the corner. Yes. Oh, so do they come over family. and visit and heckle oh. you all the time? <laughs> 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 yeah, but his family's from the neighborhood. My parents and the rest of my family is from Lake Charles, Louisiana. That's where I'm originally from. I came here in '97, and then I met my husband. I grew up cooking in the kitchen with my family at a young age. When I was 11 years old in the fifth grade, my mom would buy groceries and say, you want to cook dinner tonight? This is, look, I have pork chops. You want to do something with these pork chops? I have chicken. So I, I've been preparing meals for the family ever since my grandmother was one of those country grandmothers that would cook chitlin and collard greens. I'll see in the kitchen chopping up bushels of okra and shelling pecans. So I always helped her in the kitchen. You know, it was nothing to go in grandma's kitchen and see a stuffed cow's tongue sitting on the stove. You know, <laughs> cow's tongue. <laughs> it, it was always something. And my grandmother cooked every single day. You know, we had hot meals every single day. Oh. Yeah. So this is what the final product looks like. Um, I'll plate it up. So sure. you can either react to that by loving it or not love it. You know but what I mean? I love, I love the, versatil love I love the versatility. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. are we still talking about the cow tongue? No, I'm just oh. like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, the cow tongue too, but I mean, just being around cooking like that, either you, either it becomes something that gets like in your heart or, but you know. This life kind of chose me. I didn't cho choose it. Mm -hmm. I never set up in life to be a chef own a restaurant. I have a degree in biology pre-med. I work for the state laboratory prior to Hurricane Katrina. This building came available. My husband said, why don't we buy the building, make a corner, a coffee, coffee store, sandwich shop, and it just evolved into a restaurant. I mean, it's nothing that I set out to do. I was just like, come on, let's try it and do that because everybody's life kind of took a different yeah. direction, I think, after Hurricane Katrina. And everybody got an opportunity to start over, I think, and do something new. And that's what we did. And we just kind of took off from there. You know, I never really knew the talent that I had from Kitchen. I never knew how people would receive it. And, you know, it's just been, it's just been a blessing. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I know our viewers are so so excited to see how this comes out because it, it smells it, fantastic. Think, unfortunately, y'all can't taste it, but we can taste it. <laughs> <laughs> Soon, though. Yes. So, Sashro's next weekend, right? Right, right. Starts on August 3rd and goes through the 5th, if I'm not mistaken. Are you going to be by the Mint or where will you be? Yes, by okay, the Mint. So we'll Facing Barracks. Okay. And what else are you serving? The deep fried stuffed bell peppers, our Cajun seafood egg rolls, um, fried green tomatoes, the shrimp from a lot of that's and we're doing um, an Eat Fit version of our fried green tomatoes, so just the shrimp from a lot salad. So it'll be the mixed oh, greens okay. with the shrimp from a lot. Great. Oh, I'm so sorry. And we're just gonna finish this off with ramalot. And that's our Chipotle ramalot sauce.
right and did you come hungry yes <laughs> of course it's lunchtime <laughs> you think we didn't plan this right <laughs> Okay, so if I order in the restaurant, that's how I'm you're gonna get, get yes. yes. So the bigger size is okay, and this is what you're gonna see at Satchmo. Satchmo, yes. Gotcha. Oh man, is that the more bite size, is? finger friendly, on the go version? Yes. I bet you can't wait to get your uh, hands on a fork, right, Ann? I am. Dig in My there. Mouth is water. So we can tear apart and see how beautiful <laughs> those look on the inside. I'm gonna move this for you so you can put that yeah. there. And these are pretty quick to come together. I mean, I know we didn't make that many. I'm not talking about when you have to make yeah, them. Yeah, but the recipe did. It did. Yeah, it, it did. comes together pretty quickly. And you don't. Have, it doesn't look like you have to be a rocket scientist. To no, and like I said, <laughs> in, in the craft, that's something that you can pre-make in advance and freeze. Right. That was only about what, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, I don't think so. It wasn't long at all. Totally Do you think these are too hot for me to pick one up and bite it? Try it. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm scared. I don't and want to burn my mouth. I'm gonna cut this one open so, you, so we can see at home what they look like on the inside. Mm. So you can see your shrimp Ooh. here and your crab meat, your bell pepper. Take a look at that. That's delicious. I'm a happy girl. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna have a bite? How many of these do you eat in like a week? Probably a lot. No. I'm Look gonna be help. honest. I'm gonna be honest. Do I don't. I, I don't eat much all day long. And me and my husband go home every night, and we fix like eggs and bacon and toast and pancakes. <laughs> and at eleven twelve o'clock at night. At eleven twelve o'clock at night. When I'm at the festival, now that's a whole different thing. Right. Because I'm out there all day, so I, I'll, I'll eat home. these all day. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, I don't blame you. Breakfast is my favorite. That's really good. Favorite. I can just eat the bell peppers just fried and battered by uh -huh. themselves, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for having us. And thank you for showing us how to do this. I'm going to try it at home. And uh, I'll start with my family and see if I can make it taste the way you made it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Let me know how it turns out. I will. All right. Bye -bye. We'll see you at Sashman. All right.